Okay. All right, sorry about that. I'll try not to kick down the ditch of it this time. Okay, so um, there's a, there can be a lot of stuff that you bring camping. We just went to Gardner State Park last weekend, and I brought a whole trailer of like 10 foot by five foot trailer of stuff for 12 people at least, but when you do the full on Dutch oven cooking, um, kind of, it's not quite glamping because you don't have like air conditioners and stuff like that, but we definitely, you know, had a good time um, when we went last weekend. But so today we want to start with like, what are the essentials? What are the things that you need to go camping to make it easy? And then what are some of like the simple nice to haves that make your experience just a little bit better? Because you can keep adding from there. And a lot of it's going to be personal preference as well. Um, you know, for example, like if you're a coffee drinker, there might be a few things that you want to bring that a non-coffee drinker wouldn't bring. So um, we're going to start with the tent. Uh, this tent here, it's a Marmont uh, Catalyst two-person tent. And um, it's a great beginner tent. Um, the price is pretty good. I think it was like $170 or something like that for a two-person tent. Um, there's plenty of space in there. And I've got it set up like this right now just to show you that when you're setting up a tent and it's windy, um, sometimes it's easier to not connect the actual tent to the poles. And you can just put the poles in place and then pick up the tent and figure out like exactly where you need it to be um, before you put the stakes in. Um, so that's just it just helps a little bit from that perspective. And then um, you can go ahead and put it in your um, This particular tent, we, we have other trainings where we show you exactly how to set up the tent, so we're not going to do that today because we want to get through all the gear. But this particular tent, um, it has doors on both sides of the tent, which is great when you have two people in it. Um, and then it has a vestibule in the front, which is where you can store your backpack and any gear outside of the tent, so you've got room inside for both people. So this is a great beginner tent. And then if you're looking for something just a little bit bigger, um, on the wall in the back, they've got a North Face, um, I think it's a three-person tent. And it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but you're going to have more space. Um, and both of the tents are going to last you years and years and years and years. So um, great beginner tents. OK, the next piece of gear that you want, try not to knock down my whole campground, is a sleeping bag. Now, a sleeping bag, um, these come in all different, um, you, can get, you can get really cheap ones or you can get really expensive ones, but you're gonna have this thing for a long time. Okay, so uh, I've had my sleeping bag for 18 years now and I love it, it's in great, great condition, I use it all the time. Uh, mine's a 24 degree bag which is a lot for, it's kind of warm for Texas. This particular bag is 29 degrees as well. But what's great about this bag is when you open it up, um, there's like a liner inside of here. So when it's warmer outside, you, don't, you can just leave it open and then you have an extra layer, right? Or when it's cold outside, you know, you just bundle yourself up. So this is actually a great multi-purpose bag. So it's good for beginners because if you're not quite sure what temperature you're going to be in, um, you can use it. You can use it either way. And there's additional liners that you can get to put into your sleeping bags to make them hotter or colder, um, depending on what trip you're going. And they're they're relatively cheap compared to the actual sleeping bag. The other thing I really like about this bag is it's not quite a zipper at your foot, but all the way down at the bottom, there's a zipper where you can open up and stick your feet out. And you'd be surprised how many times like that comes in handy. <laughs> um, because if it's like kind of chilly outside, but like you're too hot in your sleeping bag, you just unzip the bottom, stick your feet out, and it's perfect. Um, so that's why I like this one. Um, so, and then this one is really, really good for the price as well. So this is about $100, $110. So for the functionality, this is a great beginner bag if you don't know what, what 
exactly what you're going to be doing. Now, a couple things to think about when you're getting a sleeping bag is um, the more room that you have in the sleeping bag, the cooler you're going to be in it. So the sleeping bags are meant to kind of be snug, like the snugger you are in the sleeping bag, the warmer you're going to be. So you want to try to also get a bag that fits you, fits your body um, decently. So if you're, this one's probably, this one's pretty big for me. <laughs> sometimes they come in like long and sometimes they come like, you, sometimes you can get them in regular length or long length. Um, so just look at that when you're, look at those options when, when you're going to get a sleeping bag. But since we are in Texas, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Like I would still, I could sleep in this bag still because the type of um, the temperatures, the low temperatures at night would still be just fine. All right, so tent and sleeping bag and pillow. <laughs> I always forget my pillow. Since you're car camping, you can always just grab your pillow from your bed, but um, since I always forget mine, um, I actually need to get one and just put it in my camping box so that I always have it. So that's just a good thing to have. Okay, um, as far as essentials go, the next thing is, I lost it, oh here it is, is a headlamp um, or some kind of light source. So when you're camping, um, once it, the, the sun goes down, you want to be able to find all your stuff. Um, so have some kind of head source, uh, light source. And this headlamp, this pet, petzl, it's like 30 bucks. It's great. You can't really go wrong with a, with a headlamp. Any of them are going to work for car camping. Okay. Those are really the essentials because after that, um, after that, I mean, everything else is just making your trip easier, right? So, you know, your tent is coming with stakes and poles and your rain fly. Um, always make sure that you're checking your tent for the actual tent poles and the stakes before you go on your trip because uh, the first two camping trips I went on, I borrowed a tent from somebody and they didn't put their stakes in the bag. <laughs> and it makes it kind of hard to set your tent up on a windy beach when you have no stakes. <laughs> well, you can set it up, but it may not stay there. Um, okay, so everything else, real, I mean, those are the essentials. The parks are gonna have, usually they have benches or something for you to sit on, but it's always better to bring a chair um, that has a back, um, especially if you're gonna be hiking or doing other activities in the park, uh, you wanna make sure you have a chair. And then um, I brought the camel back out because even though it's, this is more for your hiking experience versus your, your camping experience, um, if, if you're new to getting gear, the first things I would get is a hydration pack and a headlamp and a sleeping bag. Because tents you can borrow easily, you know, sleeping bags, it depends on your preference on if you want to borrow somebody's sleeping bag or rent one that other people have been using. You can rent tents, you know. Um, so these are the things that like, you know, you're putting your mouth on and stuff. So like, I would go ahead and get these first. So a camelback, a headlamp, and a sleeping bag are like the first three essential items that, that I would get if I'm starting to get um, gear from scratch. And when you're looking for a camp, for a hydration pack, look for one that has a waist, that has a waist strap. Because, especially if you're getting a bigger bag, because the bigger the bag, the more stuff you can put in it. And if you do eventually want to start doing longer hikes or backpacking, um, you the waist strap helps distribute the weight and keep it off your shoulders. You'll just be much, much more comfortable. This particular bag has a really good waist strap. Some of them just have, that wasn't me. <laughs> Do that. Um, some of them just have like, uh, like a strap, like, like this thin strap. I wouldn't get that one either. I would get something that's comfortable, something that you can make tight on your hips. And you want it to sit on your hips as well. I've seen some where they're sitting a lot higher and really to take the weight off your shoulders, you want them on your hips. Okay, any questions? You guys can feel free to ask questions throughout this. Otherwise, no. all right, I'll just keep going. Okay, so 
to my first nice to have this is this gear line um i actually i this is almost on an essentials list for me but it's still kind of a nice to have but it's just a daisy chain with carabiners and these cool twist ties um these twist ties come in handy for so many things um if something breaks you can use them if you want to um if you need to strap something on the outside of your camelback, I mean, just the hanging stuff in your tent. So what you can do is you can hang this from one side of your tent to the other side inside of your tent. And then you can attach your water bottle or your headlamp or, you know, hold, tie up your phone with the twist ties to the chain and everything could be above you and easy to find when you're in your tent. Because sometimes things get lost um, when they're just kind of loose. Um, so this is definitely, I have, I have one of these, this actual one, and then I've made my own with like, these, with P cord. Okay. So then, um, because all of your gear starts adding up, and a lot of it's kind of small too, um, I've started doing like a bin system for camping. And when you first start out, I think when I first started out, I had like one bin. Well, now that I'm planning camping trips for like 20 people, I've got a, I've got a lot more bins. But, um, but essentially, like when you're first starting out, all the stuff I'm going to show you probably could fit in one bin. But so I've got a fire bin. Um, this is you have lighters. It's well, it's multi-purpose. It's fire, water, and stakes is what I called it. But so it's got lighters in here, extra stakes. You always want to have some extra stakes because sometimes they bend. Um, they just go missing randomly. <laughs> um, so, and, or you forget them, so you want to have some extra stakes. Um, I have water purifying tablets. That's more for kind of backpacking and other stuff. But, and then um, sometimes I have like cheater fire starter stuff in here, like just depending on where I'm going. I will tell you a story though. We have tables um, set up when we're camping, and so we've got all the stove set up and then the stove has like a shelf where you can put the box. So we put the fire starter box under the table so the lighter was close to the stoves. And I don't know what happened, but somebody was making water for coffee and they somehow <laughs> burned a hole through the fire starter box. <laughs> so be really, really careful when you're, um, when you're cooking with stuff and make sure you know where the flames are going and maybe don't store your fire starter box underneath the stove. That's probably smart. Okay, so then there's all of your electronic stuff. So do you need batteries, extra batteries for your headlamps? Do you need cords to charge your phones or cameras? Um, I always carry a pair of scissors. And I'm going through this list kind of quickly because we have um, in the workbook that you guys can get, um, we've got checklists and full lists of a lot, all the gear, a lot of the gear nice to haves, and we go into some more detail there as well. So, um, so you know, usually I just keep this, and this has extra stakes in it too. I have the extra stakes everywhere. Um, battery packs. So these battery packs. You can charge these before you leave. That way, if you don't, if you are camping at a site that has electricity or doesn't have electricity, you've got extra um, battery. And usually, one of my nice to haves is a solar panel. And so, during the day, you just lay this out at your campsite if it's going to be sunny and not rainy, and recharge your battery packs. And then at night or whenever you can charge your cameras or your phone as, as, your, as you need them at night. Um, so that's kind of how I, I work the system. Um, and have you guys heard of Karn Box? Or Karn, the subscription box for outdoor stuff? It's pretty cool. It's like, um, you, you, it's a subscription service and like every month they send you a box of outdoor goodies and you can get different levels of like, you know, the, the, the cheaper one is like little gadgets and then the more expensive one gives you like tents and hammocks and stuff. Anyway, it's a good gift to get people too if you're gonna get a gift, so I got it as a gift. And this this is a, um, a, a flashlight 
but it's also a battery, USB battery charger. So this one comes in, this is pretty cool. Um, I don't know the brand or anything because it power practical. Um, but I keep that with the solar panel and then I use that as my, as my system. This, this is actually helping me pack because I'm leaving for three weeks tomorrow and <laughs> kind of organizing stuff as we go here. Okay, so then um, over here I've got this big bin, this big yellow bin, and for, um, you know, for kind of like a, a step above a bare essentials camping trip, this is about as much stuff as you really need. So in this bin, I've got the hefty hammer. This is to help you get your stakes in. Um, it comes in handy so many times, it's not even funny. Um, sometimes the ground is really, really, really hard. Um, so you can have a hammer in the car. If you don't have a hammer, just grab a rock that's around and, and you can use the rock to try to bang it in. And you can also pour a little bit of water in the spot where you're putting your, your stake so that it, you can try to get it to go in a little bit easier. So, got a hammer, um, big streamer, if you're a coffee drinker, um, these kettles are great, um, you just boil water and then you put your coffee grinds in here and then let it simmer and you've got coffee, um, I'm going to show you what you're going to boil it on in a second, but if you make too much, these thermoses are fantastic, or if you only want to make one pot and then just kind of have it. Um, these are really great. And so usually what we do is we boil, boil water, put it in here, and then you can use it. It stays hot for a really long time, or you can put your coffee in here and take it with you. This particular bottle, I just found out this thing is really cool. It has a little strainer on it. Um, so what you can put tea leaves down inside the bottle and let them seep. And then when you're drinking, um, the strainer will keep all the stuff out. Or you can put frozen fruit or crushed fruit in there and just keep, and it'll kind of filter it out a little bit. So this is, this is a pretty cool bottle. I haven't seen this before. Um, $22. Yeah, that's not bad. It's pretty similar to any of the other insulated um, thermoses that you can get. So, okay. Um, all right. So you see, I've got the Dutch oven set up here. <laughs> I knocked down or I'm trying not to knock it down. The tripod, um, is for if you're going to cook over a fire. Um, if you're not going to cook over a fire and you're just going to use charcoals, you can, you don't need the tripod, you can just, you just put the Dutch oven onto the charcoal. So, um, when I started camping, I just started with a cast iron skillet. So if you want kind of like the good cooking and the good flavor of the Dutch oven, but you're not ready for Dutch oven cooking with charcoal and everything, you can just use the cast iron skillet right on top of a propane flame. Um, and you cook anything like you would at your house. Um, and then these hefty leather gloves help when you're messing with the skillets get hot, the Dutch ovens get hot, the charcoal gets hot. So these come in handy. But um, if you don't have one of these, you can just use like a towel, right? So these are all like extra things like um, if you have just like a regular dish towel or something, you know, you can use that on the handle, just be careful. And typically when, typically when you're hanging the Dutch oven, it depends on which Dutch ovens you have. This one's a, a lodge. My handle doesn't normally get hot unless it's laying like right next to the coals. And this chain doesn't normally get hot either. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, so if I'm cooking, I can usually just touch the chain without anything, but definitely test it before you touch it. Ah! Okay, I'm going to put this down mainly because the floor is just slick 
when you're outside, it just stands up on its own. You don't need anything else. But and then usually you're you're setting it up in some kind of firing, um, so uh, the legs can just you know go out to the to the inside of the firing. Okay. So other cool stuff. P cord. This is similar to um, to the daisy chain P cord, um, parachute cord. It's just nylon. You can do pretty much anything with this stuff. So I always have some just to um, just in case, right? If you want to hang your trash, like maybe you're camping someplace where it doesn't have the pole to hang your trash, you can use this for it. Um, if you need to hang uh, your food or your pack or to fix something. There's a thousand things you can do with the rope. So I always have some rope and a first aid kit. Um, with your first aid kits, make sure you're changing um, changing it out. Like check it because you don't use it that often. Hopefully, um, but the the alcohol pads they dry out um, and the medicine you know goes bad and stuff like that. So you want to make sure you're keeping an eye on what's inside of your your first aid kit and now when you're in what's inside your first aid kit this is also going to be you need to think about what you need on a regular basis right or not a regular basis but like what kinds of things you need like bugs love to bite me they bite me all the time like I don't know why so <laughs> so I have like Benadryl cream to put on bug bites which most people wouldn't have in their first aid kit but I get bit so often that I have that um, and then I also have Claritin D because that's what I use for my allergies and if I don't know where I'm going I can get bad allergies so those are just examples of like different things that are personal to me that you just need to think about you know what's personal to you and in the workbook we do ask you a bunch of questions that try to help you um, think through some of these scenarios like what would you need um, and then Benadryl um, Benadryl, and I actually did have this <laughs> the other day, but um, Benadryl is like really, really good to have in your first aid kit. And this past weekend when we were in Gardner, some, something weird happened. I think something bit me on my eyeball, which was, <laughs> these two girls were there. They, they, they experienced it. But like my eye just swelled up from the actual white part and then like the lids swelled up. So luckily, uh, Bridget had some Benadryl and I had extra, but uh, and it was fine like a couple days later. But it was who knows why? Like who knows why? Like I told you, I get bit by everything. Um, so just kind of you know, and then I have a compass in here. I've got you know some scissors, some tape, and just and gloves and everything, just the normal stuff. Usually, what I do is. Um, <laughs> So this is my personal one. Um, they sell these here too, but um, usually what you do, is, a good thing to do is just buy a starter, a starter kit, and then you can just add things to it and just keep, and then they buy, you can buy replacement stuff to add to it as well. But it's nice to just kind of, for your first one, just go ahead and get one um, and then customize it. Okay. Um, lanterns, there's all kinds of lanterns that you can get. Um, these are nice to hang near your tent or near your cook station um, if you are cooking. Um, if you get, oh, missing a battery. Um, if you if you get a lantern that has a red light feature, then the red light helps you be able to see at night, uh, see in your surroundings, but it keeps your night vision so that if when you turn it off, you're not it's not completely dark and. It's easier for you to see the stars and stuff at night. So um, if you're going to get a lantern, look for one that has a red light. It's definitely worth it. Um, and then just like in your box, you know, I just always, I just keep, you know, a couple cooking utensils, a uh, cutting board. My big box down here has more utensils in it, but that's for like the 20 person camping trip so when you're just going with like two people or four people you just need a knife and a couple of forks and stuff a 
Aluminum foil is like your best friend. <laughs> when you're camping, um, you can just wrap things in it and throw it on the fire. Um, or you can throw it, you know, on your, in, in your Dutch oven or on your skillet just to make cleanup stuff easily, easier. So Dutch aluminum foil is a great thing to have in there. And then I usually keep um, plastic bags for leftover food. Um, I mean, those come in handy for everything too. So like if something, if one of your food bag breaks, you put it in there. And then as far as the stove goes, these uh, one burner stoves are fantastic. Um, they have some other smaller stoves here that work just as well. Um, but this one holds the Dutch oven really well and it's pretty, pretty cheap. And then you just get these green propane tanks and you've got a stove set up. So one of these usually, it depends on what you're gonna cook, right? So you wanna think about the meals that you're gonna have. The more you wanna cook, the more elaborate and the more things that you need, right? So um, if you keep your meals kind of simple, you can just do one of these, one skillet and just kind of make it work. All right, a um, couple other things, just toilet paper, um, paper towels, uh, wipes and duct tape. These should be, well, these should be essentials. <laughs> um, everything else you can kind of, kind of do without. All right, so, and then we've got the camping table over here and the camping chairs. And really, like, that's, that's a very basic camping trip. You don't need all of these things. Um, you can pare it down for sure. And if you're not going, you know, with a lot of people, you know, you can do it in this one black box and maybe like one smaller box. You can fit everything that you need in there. Well, obviously, plus your, plus your gear. Um, because this is just like the extra like nice to have things so like what I would do a couple things that I do especially with the extras because carrying your gear it's a lot of work to pack it unpack it at the campsite and then you have to do it all again when you get home so uh, usually what I do is like I kind of keep track of what I'm using when I'm camping and if I go on like two or three camping trips and something never gets used then it's time to stop bringing it, right? And then you can use that space to bring something else. Um, like, I've been bringing cornhole to some of our camping trips, but we don't, we never use it. So um, I'm gonna stop bringing that. <laughs> um, so now you have to request it if you want it. Yes. I was gonna say for the necessities, I didn't know that at the state parks, they never seem to have hand soap. So ah. that's something for me that is a necessity, but I have forgotten every single time. Yes, that's a very good point. A lot of times the parks, they don't have soap in the bathroom, so you do have to bring your own soap. Um, yes, I think that's in my other box. <laughs> uh, yeah, so definitely bringing soap is, is, and bring like biodegradable soap, right? Don't, so that you're protecting the environment. Um, and also when you're washing stuff, so like when you're washing your dishes and everything, um, you want to wash it away from your campsites um, and you don't want to pour the, the food or like the food juices out in the ground, throw that away. So scrape all the food out. If you do need to like wash your pots, if you can't just like wipe them clean, then pour a little bit of water in there, kind of get all the gunk off your pots and then throw that water in the garbage instead of like on the ground because the little food pieces and the smells from the food will attract other animals. Um, and then also don't keep anything smelly inside your tent. So any toiletries like um, toothpaste, shampoo, your soap, um, food, you don't want any of that in your tent either. You wanna keep that in a container or in your car and if you're in bear country, in a bear box. Any other questions? Any questions on online? No? Okay. I did bring um, one other thing. We're going to talk a little bit, just briefly. 
instead of a, a tent, you could um, sleep in a hammock. And I don't have space to like set it all up. Um, but you can, um, you can, you can either buy all the different pieces to, to make a tent. So this is the hammock. There's a bug fly that um, you can buy separately that encloses you and the hammock. And then there's a rain fly that you could put over it. I actually sleep in a hammock tent when I go camping most of the time. So if you're thinking about doing a hammock, sleeping in a hammock instead of a tent, a couple things to think about are when you're sleeping in a hammock, you're about 10 to 15 degrees colder than if you were sleeping on the ground because the air is just going underneath you. Um, I don't tend to use this, oh, I forgot a ground pad. Uh, you also want a ground pad, which are these um, pads that are rolled up on the shelf over here. Um, because that's going to protect you from, um, it's going to give you comfort from the rocks and it's also going to give you warmth or keep you cool from the ground. Um, I don't use the same big thick ground pad inside the hammock, but I do use, if it's going to be like less than 60, 60 degrees or something like that, about that, um, I'll put like a yoga mat or a very, very thin um, ground pad in, in the tent. And then... I just think it's more comfortable. So um, if you're gonna go with a hammock, check to see um, a lot of parks, especially in Texas, like there's not great tree options in some of them. So if you're not sure if you're gonna have trees to be able to hang your hammock on, check the weather. If, it's, if you know for sure it's not gonna rain, you can still bring it anyway. And then just, if there's no trees, you just lay on it like a tarp, you know? Um, you might be out. You know, you, you could probably figure out how to break the, the, the bug fly if you needed that part, but um, basically my backup plan would be just to use it as a tarp and just lay out in the open if it's not going to rain. And if you're not sure if it's going to rain or not, and you're not sure if there's no trees, if I'm car camping, I'll just throw in a tent just to be on the safe side. Um, so. All right, any questions about hammock camping? No. Guys are quiet, so. Okay. Any questions about any gears or any? Do you have questions about um, different things that you're thinking about getting? Or, I mean, I could I could talk about gear all night, but like we were trying to keep it not we were trying to make it not overwhelming for like your first trip. So these are just kind of some of the little things that make it um, your trip a little bit better. Yes. If I'm gonna camp when it's hot, what's like the coolest ground pad type deal to use? Like an air mattress or like, I don't know, just yeah. to be as cool as possible? So when you're camping in warmer weather, so air mattresses, um, they do tend to keep you a little bit cooler because the air, like the air inside has to, has to warm up, right? So when you're using air mattress in cold weather, you tend to be colder than if you just slip on a pad on the ground. So an air mattress could help, or they actually make these, they make liners um, for your sleeping bag that can cool you off like 10 degrees as well. Um, and then they do have some uh, ground pads where, do, you know that ground pad that reflects onto the ground, is that for warmth and cold or just cold, do you know? Uh, for warmth, okay. So they do have some ground pads that like reflect and they keep you warmer, but for cooler weather, um, you can do the liner inside your sleeping bag or just the liner if it's that hot. Anything else? All right, well, if you guys have questions, I'll be around um, so you can go ahead. Oh, I forgot one thing, I saw her with the book. These books, um, I covered it. These Falcon Guides, I found to be like the best of the guide books. Um, I haven't read all of them, but if I'm going to a specific park, um, I always look for the Falcon Guide version of that park for the hiking and more for the hiking for sure. But um, the Falcon Guides are my favorite. So that's it. All right, thanks so much for coming. Feel free to get more beer from Carbach. And thanks again to Whole Earth for having us tonight. And then tomorrow we're going to be online. Um, at noon talking about 
we're gonna go into gear again, but we're gonna talk about different pieces and like where where should you spend money on gear and where should you save money. For example, like the headlamp, you can get pretty much any headlamp and it'll be fine. Um, but something like a sleeping bag, it's you're already gonna invest a lot of money, so it's kind of worth it to get a really good one. So we'll see you guys tomorrow.